If you've ever wondered how much better a beam antenna is over, say, a dipole antenna, this video is probably worth a watch. Now, full time here at home, I have an off center fed dipole, uh, so the lowest band it, it will do is 40. Um, so it's total length of the antenna, obviously one leg longer than the other. Total length is circa 20 meters. So on 10 meters, that would actually be two wavelengths, but the antenna will work on, uh, I'll actually work all bands 40 through uh, 10 uh, with a tuner. It's got a, it's got an additional leg on it. Uh, it's actually a commercially built antenna. Uh, it's not often I buy an antenna, but I've had that up for, I don't know, 18 months now, say. It's an M0CVO HW42QRO, I think is, is the model. Uh, it's more often than not made in a, a 400 watt version, but I got an upgraded, upgraded uh, version to take a kilowatt just so it had that little bit of headroom. And if I was going to be running, say, 400 watt CW, I wasn't going to do any damage to the, the 4 to 1 ballon that's in it. Now, I've got that up all the time because the, the, the station manager doesn't want to me to have a beam up. But from time to time, I'll put my moxing up. And today, I've had my 10 meter moxing up and I've been doing some AB receive tests between these antennas. And yet, as I said, the results are, are quite interesting. Now, this uh, moxing uh, that I had up today, obviously it's two elements, so it's a two element beam. Um, I had it mounted on my EA antenna's 11 meter aluminium mast, but it had some sections taken out of it and then I didn't have it fully extended the sections that were left. So it was probably up around about five or six meters, which is about half wave on 10 meters or just over that. So it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty good. We're not gonna be getting any lensing or those, those lobes, multiple lobes. So 10 meter itself this afternoon was a bit of a disappointment. Um, normally, middle of the afternoon, uh, about 2 o'clock GMT, we'll start to get the grey line of North America where Europe can start hitting that and sometimes, quite often, the stations are quite strong, especially now we're well underway with Solar Cycle 25. But um, I got five or six contacts in the log and it was all the usual suspects running beams, running big power. Um, but what I will say is, um, each one of these stations, I managed to get them first call um, and they were all called on the Moxon. But what I was doing in between that was basically using my Kenwood TS590 and using switches. It's got two antenna sockets on it, TX antenna, antenna sockets on it, as well as an RX antenna socket, uh, I need to add. So I was switching between these on RX and the results were quite interesting. So. I'll let you have a little watch of these QSOs and also of the RX comparison between these two antennas. Okay, Delta Zulu, eight three Delta Delta. Thank you. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, zero, five and nine. Thank you. Thank you. This is Kilo Charlie. Thank you, thank you. This is Kilo Charlie 4. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye, 7-3. QRZ, you're up. Six, your Echo 9 or Fox Drive in Keith. Uh, QRZ, you're up. QRZ, you're up. Mike, Mike, Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray. Mike Mike Zero Oscar Papa Mike Mike Zero Oscar Papa uh, Thank you Russ Vic uh, uh, Mike Mike Zero Oscar Papa X-ray OPX over Yeah very good Good to hear you You're 5 and 7 Call it 5 and 7 I get a lot of people in Scotland I guess my uh, antenna's going right to Scotland today No problem there and Good to get you on uh, 10 meters to as well Yeah Roger Russ My favourite band uh, I've got a mox on up And I'm running about um, 350 400 watts Something of the like Band's not fully open um, you're about a 5 and 7, 5 and 8, you're usually much stronger, but it's still early for us. I reckon another hour or so and you guys will absolutely be blowing the roof off. I won't, I won't hold it, Russ. Uh, I'm sure you'll be working, got a lot more to work there. V9FI, MM0OPX. No problem. Yeah, I'll go back on 20 later on. Thank you. Keep it's a center fed dipole. 
Mount the first time. You're 2,800 miles away. Yeah, it's a little bit stronger on the rocks in there. So what do I think about those results? Well, you probably noticed that I've actually got quite a high noise floor. I've got about an S3, it varies, S2 to S4, S5 of noise depending on where I am in the band. I'm getting noise in particular every 100 kilohertz. Now, the cause of this is actually my new computer. So I'm currently in dialogue with the supplier. Um, hopefully they're going to resolve it, but, and, I'm, and I'm sure they will. But um, that really didn't help things. Um, but I think when, this, when the signal actually gets up, S5, S6, S7, and it's on the Moxon, and then when you, when you switch it back to the off-center fed dipole, the signal's dropping by two to three S points. So an S point on a Kenwood is six dB. So there's 12 to 18 dB down. That's quite a lot. Um, I mean, it wasn't always the case, but on average, that was the difference. If the station was just over that noise level, then there really wasn't a lot to see on the S meter. But there was a couple of very, very faint stations um, and you could hear just hear them on the Moxon and then you couldn't hear them on the off-center fed dipole. So I think that, you know, hands down, the Moxon is much better um, than the uh, off-center fed dipole. Bearing in mind, it's, it's two wavelengths long uh, on this band. So you're going to be getting massive peaks and nulls, but I think that the off-center fed dipole put up a very brave fight. And if that's all you can put up and it's going to give you all band coverage, that's why I put it up. So I could have something up all the time and it is a massive compromise. It's got that big dog leg in it. So the, 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 the pattern must be all over the place. Um, but the times that I can put up the Moxon, I think it is well worth it. So if you're thinking about putting or creating a Moxon, um, I'll put a link down in the description to a video I made uh, on that antenna. And if you want to build one, quite simple to do, um, quite cheap to do, and it, it's certainly very, very worthwhile. Now, a few weeks ago, um, I had up my 5 8 wavelength and I'd done a little comparison against my off-center fed dipole and the vertical was better, not by much than the off-center fed. So taking that logic, I don't think the Moxon is going to be that much better than the 5 8 uh, vertical and I don't think I'm going to see as much of a difference between those two antennas and that's an experiment that I need to do. I don't know when I'll get to it. Um, this is a rare occasion 
where I've actually had a free afternoon to myself. Uh, everyone's a way out that I've been able to do this. So hopefully we can get another chance, um, certainly maybe into the spring and before we get into the summer, where I'll be able to compare the Moxon and the 5 8 wave vertical and then you can be the judge to see is it really worthwhile putting up the Moxon or not. But for me, yes it is because the Moxon also gives you that massive front to back ratio meaning that you can cut out signals from your rear and that's quite good for us because we can cut down um, the amount of Central Europe um, if we just, whatever, for example, if we want to work North America. So there you are guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, I mean, I know it wasn't apples for apples comparison, but I think it's still worthwhile. It was worthwhile doing because, you know, a lot of us have these multiband antennas in their garden. Um, so there we are. Right, guys, 73, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.